everybody, welcome to the Comic Game Movie Show. My name is Deshaun, and today I'm here to give you my review of The Boys Season 3 as a whole. Now, I will probably spend most of my time talking about the finale, because I find it interesting, is that I think The Boys Season 3 finale was weak sauce. It was, like, very weak. Like, I, and the thing about it is, I see so many people pretending like it wasn't, and it blew my brain. You have to understand, as a Marvel fan, I have spent the last, I don't know, since WandaVision came out, with people kind of like, just going completely ham on the finales, you know? And to a degree, I agree with people that the finales aren't as good as they could be. But the, but the fact of the matter is, The Boys Season 3, for all the, all the good things that were in it, because this is a damn good season, though I will, I will admit the over-the-top nature and the, re, and the R-rated nature of it all, sometimes it's like, sometimes it feels like a bit much, and it feels a bit like, I don't want to say, you know what, you know what, The Boys, like, it's still a great show, this season is a great season. If I had to give this season a, a, as a as a whole a grade, I would give it an 8.5. But I will say that the stick of rated R superheroes, you know, that the whole stick of the blood and the guts and, and the sex is like, I will say the stick has finally started to, it kind of reminds me of Deadpool 2. I remember when Deadpool 2 came out. People will kind of tell you differently now, but Deadpool 2 actually did not initially make more money than Deadpool 1. People forget, Deadpool 2 technically made less, they re-released it, then it made more. But I digress. One of the one of the things that I and many noticed, while I still enjoy the fuck out of Deadpool 2, had a blast with Deadpool 2, the stick of Deadpool being this rated R superhero who breaks the fourth wall... Had finally kind of hit a, hit a, okay, now what? And the boys is saved mostly because of these great characters and this great acting. So the boys is saved by that because there's some really good arcs going on. You got the thing with A-Train. Obviously, you got this thing going on with Huey. Um, Starlight and whatnot. I, I, I mean, goddamn, Homelander is always a treat because you never know how he's gonna react, and he's also unpredictable, and he's and he keeps you on your on your toes, and like you're never quite sure how things are gonna go out. But and, you know, the, so there's so much, there's so many good arcs, and there's so many good actors, so such great acting and great character development that it rises above it. But I will admit, the thing that got the boys on the map. Was the, was the idea that this show was willing to go places that the Marvel, that Marvel wouldn't go. That these are ideas, and they even pushed that even more in the first episode where a shrinking character named Termite tries to jump in the Frenchie's asshole and explode him from the inside, making fun of the Ant-Man joke that went on for years about Thanos. There are many jokes like that. Oh, j gags, jokes, and... I mean, there are some things in the show... That are like, whoa. Like, and like, and to the show's credit, there are things in the show, particularly the Hero Gasm episode, and particularly certain, some things that Termite does, which is he crawls in. <laughs> uh, how do I just say this without, hmm. Well, well, clearly he's bisexual, because he does the same thing to a woman later on in the show, so clearly he's bisexual. He, he has no preference. But he crawls into his lover's, um, penis. <laughs> and, like, they show him crawl in. And then there's, like, they show him inside of it. And he sneezes and expands and he blows that old dude's lower body off. That was one of the grossest, most ridiculous, most over-the-top, one of the... You could have only done that on this show thing. And that was great. The first three episodes, I thought were on point, And I was like, this is what you come to see this show for. But it goes on and on and on. And, you know, you, you get, they introduce a new character to the show. A character that shakes, it shakes, that's pretty much the crux of the whole season. That shakes the whole season to its core. There are two main things that are like the big cruxes of the season. One, Homelander starts to not give a fuck. 
and Homelander starts to realize that there is a that in America in particular there is a market for everything and there are going to be people who love you for everything sure does Homelander's base come off as psycho homicidal maniacs do they share a lot in common with another former you know person in um recent American history's base sure they share very similar <laughs> very similar vibes to a um, a former president's base but and sh and it's no doubt that they were making an allegory to those two things to homelander's base to another guy's base that i won't mention but you know what i'm talking about and homelander realized because throughout the course of like the beginning of the show, which I kind of mentioned when I um reviewed it, like, they really think they have him under control because at the end of the day, he says it in the show, I want to be loved, but, but what they weren't accounting for is that he's like, you know, I could just not give a fuck. And if I don't give a fuck, I could just kill everybody. And it's like, do you want to take that chance? And then Homelander takes over Vought, and that's kind of a shake-up thing, is Homelander in this power position. And not only that, but him realizing that there are people out there who love him for being what he is. And it's, it's fucked up, and it's sick, but it is what it is. And the other crux is the introduction of Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy and the, is the, um, and the, the boys' universe is their take on um, Captain America. You know, um, obviously, um, I want to say Omni-Man. Homelander is their take on Superman. Soldier Boy is their take on Captain America. He's this, you know, World War II, you know. One, like, they actually promoted him. They actually promoted Soldier Boy as the first superhero via Captain America, the first Avenger. His, out, his armor, his, oh, his classic outfit and his modern outfit both look like Captain America. When you look at it in the, in the stills and stuff, his cla his modern outfit looks like something Captain America would modernly wear. Even his shield is the old school Captain America logo. Now, it doesn't look exactly like the Captain America, clearly, but he's modeled after Captain America, played very well by Supernatural's own Jensen Ackles. He, he's, he's, he's a very interesting character because just like basically every single other one of the superheroes in the show, there is a bit of sympathy towards him. And the more you learn about him, the more you realize, like, he never had a chance, dude. Like, the, like just like Homelander, he never really had a chance, man. Like, when you realize the environment he grew up in, not quite like Homelander, but it was a different kind of environment. When you realize, like, what was thrusted upon him, but when you see the things he's, he does, you're like, dude, he's an asshole just like Homelander. And, you know... And Billy uh, um, Butcher has this idea of using him to kill Homelander because um, years ago, everyone thought Soldier Boy was dead, but it turns out he got betrayed by Vought because they had just created um, Homelander. And the Russians had had him for years, for decades, experimenting on him. And in the middle of their experimentation, they somehow ended up, he, ends up, he ended up getting this ability, this energy wave comes off of him where... To a human, it'll vaporize you, at least we think. But to a soup, it'll vaporize the, you know, whatever, the superhero shit right out of your body. And it turn, and they come up with that idea. We're going to use him. We're going to kill. We're going to either kill or depower, um, you know, Homelander. One or the other. And it becomes this interesting story. And, and those are really the interesting story is, is, is Billy going far and using, and using, um, Soldier Boy to kill Homelander. Now, in the background, everyone's got their own story going on. M.M.'s got his own little story going on with, with trying to be a dad and trying to get, and trying to kill Soldier Boy. Obviously, I talked about the Huey storyline, which ended up playing out how you expected. Starlight is, um, Starlight's really the star. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I think Starlight shined the brightest this season. I think she had the most to do. She had the most urge. Um, agency that she's ever had and more and more it's all and, and you knew it was that in the first season but more and more she comes off like the superhero in a world full of assholes and people who do who are doing terrible terrible things who don't feel bad about anything that they do she's the only one who's a actual honest to god superhero now Maeve is too to a degree but Starlight is the honest to god superhero um 
We also follow up with Head Exploding Girl, even though she isn't as big of a part of the show, show as you would think she would have been. The way they set her up at the end when she blew people's heads up and was just like that. The way they set her up, you think she'd be a bigger deal, but she isn't. Um, at a certain point, um, Giancarlo Esposito's character leaves, and he never comes back. He's never even mentioned again, really. So, um, and what they set up for the future, really. But I want to talk about this finale. Before I, you know, sorry, before I end my review, I really want to talk about this finale because I think it was such a weak finale because if you watch the beginning of the show, it all kind of ended up exactly where it began. Um, you know, it be like Huey and Starlight are back together. The boys are back together. French, like, um, I, I forgot, Yumiko, her powers are back. Like... The only, like, everything's in the same place. Like, A-Train and his brother weren't talking at the beginning, weren't on really, weren't on good terms at the beginning, and they're not on good terms at the end. I mean, the Deep is still a, is still a complete, a creepy bitch. He's still that. Like, the only thing that really changed, like, Earthshot, only thing that really, really changed, even, um, Soldier Boy, the big story around Soldier Boy, by the end of the show, not only does he not really kill, he does, not only does he not kill, um, you know, Homelander, which we didn't expect him to, he didn't kill Billy, he didn't kill anybody, really. He killed his people, in the end, in the end, he kind of just, and then he, got, he just got put back in the same kind of pod he was in, that they found him in. So, like, in the end, nothing really happened, other than, the only big thing that happened was, fucking, um... Homelander got his son, and now his influence is going to be on his son. Now he's going to be a terrible influence on his son. That's it, really. Nothing else really happened, and Billy's and Billy's dying. But it's like you know how long. But but, but it's like it's like tw you could die. But it's going to be like twelve months, which is the show going to last? Like like how is the show going to take place years later? I doubt it. So it's not even that big of a deal. It, like I say, by the time the show had wrapped up, I will say, I thought it was a weak finale. I thought it was anticlimactic, really. I thought nothing really actually happened. And everything ended up sort of ending up where it started to begin with. And it's just like, with minor shifts. Like, considering all the th pieces that could have gotten changed and all the things and all the deaths, the only character who really died was Black Noir, who I would argue was the least most interesting character on the show because we because we barely knew anything about him in the first two seasons and sure we learn more about him in this season but it's nothing like groundbreaking to make us go ooh I can't wait to see more of him it's like you know he's not like he's not Homelander or something like that you know what I mean so when he died it, it, it didn't do anything to me it, it didn't affect me in any way I, I mean I was a little surprised because it always felt like the way they were playing him up was he's supposed to be like mysterious and have power and stuff, but it was just like, no, he's just a dude. Like, like he's just, he's just a tiny, he's just a meat sack, just like, just like fucking anybody else to Homelander. I thought he might be something kind of a challenge to Homelander, but nah, man, he ain't shit to him either. And it really was just like, well, why did I even waste my time with all that? Like, in the end, this season, and this is, oh man, it's like, it's gonna sound, this is gonna piss a lot of people off. It ended up kind of feeling like filler. Cause there are like literally the pieces that got moved could have been moved easily in like a couple episodes. We didn't need a whole season to do that. Because the whole reveal that Homelander's dad is Soldier Boy was like, oh, this is gonna be a big deal. Not really. Not really. It's kinda it's, it starts and it ends. It's a deal and then it's not. That's it. It's over. So, it, like I said, the show, while I enjoyed this season, it did leave, it did end on a very meh note. So, I can't be, I don't think it's as good as the other two seasons. Anyways, thank you guys for joining the Comic Game Movie Show. Please like, subscribe, and what did you think of The Boys Season 3? What did you think of that finale? Comment below and let me know. Thank you guys again. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.